Support for the Bulletproof for BJJ YouTube channel is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Their products are precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with their exclusive offer for you. Get 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code grizzly at manscaped.com. If my math is correct, that's about 8 million balls. That's a lot of balls. Now, Talk to me about your experience with Manscaped. I used this yesterday and I just did my arm in like barely any minutes. And it's so quick. It was actually very impressive. And so we have a comparison. Note this arm looking quite smooth and Bruh, vascular. And then look at this arm. Hairy bear. Grizzly. Grizzly ass. Neanderthal-esque. Here's my story with Manscaped. My partner bought me an older model a couple of years ago and I've been using it ever since. I think I've charged it once in that time because the battery just doesn't die. Oh, wow. And it's very similar to this though. This is obviously like upgraded. This is the 4.0. The fourth generation of trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents, all right? Mm. Uh, thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. You thought that was good, but you want to take a grooming game even further to the next level. The Performance Package 4.0 also includes the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. The thing that I also am impressed with with this pack is the care range. Like, right. we've got the, the ball toner. We've got the ball deodorant. The crop reviver. Crop preserver. Mate, th it actually smells amazing. I'm, I don't mess with colognes, mm. but like... <laughs> it smells fresh. So, uh, man, I'll just start, I'm just, I'm just putting this on. JT's face is going to smell like Joey's balls. <laughs> <laughs> well, the roles have reversed, because usually that's how it goes in jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I fight well from north-south. <laughs> Fam. Get 20% off and free shipping when you use the code GRIZZLY, which you can see here on the screen, at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code GRIZZLY. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. I'm JT. Hey, guys. I'm Joey. How you doing? And today we are discuss discussing cauliflower ears, <laughs> how to treat them, management, you know, what happens when you get a cauliflower ear? What are you going to do about it? The encyclopedia of cauliflower ears. Basically. Right here, right now. Yeah, we got it. We, this came through Instagram. It did. The guy was like, you guys done an episode on cauliflower ears? Because, fuck, man, I'm having trouble finding a GP that knows what to do with them. And I couldn't see anything on your podcast. I was like, how have we not spoken about cauliflower ears? It's, it's interesting because if you've been in the game long enough, you've had some experience of it. Yeah. You've either had a little bit or currently right now, you've got those big bangers hanging off the side of your head. Now, depending on the style of game you play, there's plenty of people who've been in jiu-jitsu a long time, they don't have cauliflower ears. But if you've had your head mashed into hips and wrestled, or even if you've done some striking, you've been hitting the ears, you've played a bit of footy, they get mashed up, they get swollen. We're gonna talk about our own personal experience and then we're gonna get into more of exactly what is going on with your ears and then what we can do about it. You know, you saying that makes me think that probably the, the newer school style of jiu-jitsu leads to less cauliflowering. Yes. Because it's, it's more, you know, like think of like um, bolos, inversions, yeah. that sort of, you're not using your head as a control item as much. No. But I remember back in the day for us, it was all about double legs. Yeah, pressure. It was all about like, yeah, heavy pressure, head to hip. Yes. And it was just like fucking ears blowing up. My, I got my first cauliflower ear at three months in the game. Right. For me, yes, it was probably closer to a year. But it was just a, like a frothy white belt just going mental and a, a particular weekend that set it off real bad. How'd it go down? So I went out to a, an in, uh, like a internal comp at AET, Australian Elite Team, run by Ninos Damos. Respect to Ninos and all the AET crew, much love. They are very good at triangles. Ninos has a great triangle game, and it's all right, le like a uh, right leg over triangle, and so that's my left ear. And my main defense for triangles at that time was just rip my head out of triangles. <laughs> I didn't have a real technical defense. You snap me up in a triangle, I was just going to pull my head out. And I think I beat four or five guys that day, all trying to triangle me. Anyway, I ended up losing the final to like the, one of their very tough guys. I think he choked me. Um, not a triangle, by the way. It doesn't matter. But my ear blew up. Like I kept getting my ear snapped down so the cartilage broke and my ear just puffed right out. And people were like, damn, man, you're a white belt. Yeah, that's a bad cauliflower. There was a comp the next day. Like, give me a fucking blue belt then. I was like, I'll gra graduate <laughs> me. And then it, it was cool. It was like, it was, 
I became really tight friends with all those guys. But then the next day there was a comp at uh, the Hangar, Hangar 4, which is in a similar area, kind of Preston, not far from Tullamarine. And Ninos was there the next day. He's like, you're competing two days in a row? I was like, yeah, man. I'm like, I'm here. I'm, I'm good. Let's go. And I was getting guillotined. And like I, I did pretty well that comp. And uh, I ended up getting second in the absolute. I lost my category to Cal Potter, actually, as a superstar white belt. Uh, Cal Potter UFC, shout out to Cal. But my ear was getting fatter and fatter and fatter. And it looked like a grotesque fetus hanging off the side of my head. Ooh. It was horrible. It was like Shrek's ear, but like... You know, you know what they call it in Japan, apparently? What? Gyoza ear. Oh, the <laughs> dumpling. <laughs> yeah. I don't like, that's not how they, they, don't, they say it in Japanese, obviously. But yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Gyoza ear this. <laughs> but uh, man, and everybody's like, dude, you're only a white belt. Your ear shouldn't look this bad. People are getting photos of me. They're like, look at this guy. Check this guy's ear out. Like, it wasn't good. And I went to the doctor and the doctor went, what? Go to the hospital. No, nah, I'm not touching that. I was like, man, you're a doctor. Like, you don't know how to deal with this. He's like, we could cut it. And I'm like, surely that's not a treatment, like cutting it. Because that's what some people will do. Literally like, let's get a scalpel. We'll cut it. We'll push the liquid Ugh. out and stitch it. Ugh. Horrible. And some people do do that, right? Anyway, I, I went to another uh, doctor that had a nurse on site. And the nurse had a needle that was too thick a gauge. It was mm. like a two or three mil. So it's it's. Br- like this fat needle, fat needle. And she tried to put it in. It just started, like, it just went blood. And she was like, ah, and I think a bit of blood got on her. And she's like, oh, I, I, can't, I can't do this. Oh, and I was like, that was the start what? of World War Z. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing here? Like, you guys can't help me. So I literally went to the internet, checked it out, like how to drain a cauliflower ear. I was living in St. Kilda at the time. Now, if you guys don't know, St. Kilda has had a heroin problem for a long time. Mm. Okay. So I was a rough looking human, shaved head, whatever. I walked into the chemist and said, I want uh, a pack of one mil diabetic needles. And they're like, oh yeah, show us your diabetics card. It's like, bro, I don't have diabetes. I have a fetus hanging off the side of my head. Look at this. I need to drain this. And they're like, oh, you should go to the hospital. I'm like, I'm not going to the hospital. It's not that bad. Anyway, they ended up giving it to me, giving me these packs. And I drained it myself. But the thing is, I was pulling anywhere from two to five mil of blood out of my ear daily and that was it just kept filling back up yeah it would just fill back up and that that's the thing i took a couple of days off training but here's the thing it hurts but it's not so bad you don't have to like if you just want to train like you can but it's not going to go away that's right and it, that was you have thing. to rest you have to stop yeah and i just i just did it like i would continue to drain it and it did gradually go down but there was a point at which it wouldn't go down and it healed that way and, you know, over the years, it's been now, aggravated. Now you have a masterpiece time. before you. Oh, God. You know. But, I mean, it's it's a good filter, right? Like, uh, you know, if it puts a woman off, if she looks at the ears, if she doesn't like the ears, I'm like, if you can't handle me with cauliflower ears, <laughs> you don't deserve me without them. <laughs> How about you, Joe? Talk, talk to me about your experience. Mine was, um, we, were the, we were doing, I, it just seemed like we were doing these all the time. It was my first few months of jiu-jitsu. We would do that double leg where you you shoot down onto the knee and then you wrap your back leg Catch. around their shin yep. and then you grab around the hips. Drive. And yeah, you put your head to their hip and drive. Right. You know, it's that really kind of efficient, um, simple double leg variation that was kind of classic of in BJJ. Yep. And um, you, would, you would put your head on the hip and, so, and you would turn your head to the side and so your ear is on the hip bone. Yes. And I would hit it, I would hit it on... on which side? Yeah, <laughs> You're feeling which yeah one's this worse? this side. Yeah, so I would hit it. I would I would shoot it on my left leg. My right leg would come around, and I'd go right here to the hip. Ah, okay. And it, it just started to hurt a bunch because in my right ear after you know doing this. And all I remember was that, like it was my ear was hurting a lot, but I just kept going to training anyway, and yeah. I didn't ask him my back. It's like whatever, it's fine. And then eventually, like it just went boop and popped out. And I don't know, maybe it was after a few training sessions doing these double legs. And it was like, well, oh, this big fucking thing. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is really sore. Mm. So the guys at the gym, I remember it was um, Ivan, who was a purple belt at the time. And he's like, oh, you just drain it. And coach's like, yeah, you just drain it, man. Get, get a needle, put it in, and you just drain it. And I was like, oh, okay, so this is a thing. Like, mm. And they're like, yeah, 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 it's super normal, man. Just, just drain it and you'll be fine. You come back to training. So I went to, I think I, I walked out into the street and I'm like, 
I'm not going to go buy needles and like stick it in my own ear. I'm like, this seems a bit <laughs> fucked up. But I was like, I'll yeah. go to a GP. Sure. So I went to a GP over the road, Bondi, Russian GP. And he's like, yes, how can we help? And I said, I got this co I need you to drain it. And he's like, oh, I've never seen that before. He said, there's no way I'm putting a needle in your ear. He did, said, you say, did you say, are you sure you're Russian? Yeah, that's what I'm like, I'm Come thinking on. this guy's got to know what time yeah. it is, right? Come on. And uh, he's like, no, no. He said, I'm not putting anything in your ear. He said, you need to go and see an ear specialist. Oh, and I was like, lost. I was like, the guys at the gym told me that all you got to do is put a needle in there and just suck it out. And he's like, he's like, absolutely no way, dangerous, you know, risk of infection. And uh. he's even seen a specialist. And I was like, oh, okay, thanks anyway. So I left. And I think I kind of bumbled around for a couple of days trying to see different GPs. None of them could help me. Right. And this is what the person who came through on the Instagram was like, GP didn't know what the fucking was going on. Yep. And uh, you guys can use that, what the fucking was going on. <laughs> and <laughs> That's so- That's technical terminology. Yeah. <laughs> and so- I, I remember I was like, I saw the guy training, the guy's like, you haven't done your ear yet. Like what's going And I was like, oh, it's really sore. And I couldn't, I was like, oh, I'm going to sit the double legs out tonight. It's like every fucking day, double legs. <laughs> and um, they, they were like, man, just get some needles, bring them in, we'll do it. So I went to the chemist. I said, I need some small needles. And I think I told him diabetes needles. Yep. Because someone had told me like, they're the small ones. Yep. And uh, same thing. They're like, what do you want them for? <laughs> and I was like, I want it for this year. And he's like, man, you can't be sticking it. You know, it was the same conversation. And I'm like, look, just give them to me. The guys at the gym said, you know. Come on. And I went to the gym and, you know, and Ivan drained it for me. Um, people, other people in the gym said, oh, draining it helps, but then you've got to clamp it. Yes. Because otherwise it's just going to swell back up. And I was like, oh, it feels pretty good right now. He just drained it and it just feels okay. Let's just push on. So basically I went around in circles for about a month, yep. redraining it, draining it again not clamping it, clamping it a little bit, just really not. The, doing by the it. way, the clamping, so at my gym, they're like, just get a bulldog clip. Yeah. You know those black? Yeah. You know the ones you hold together Horrible. with a stack of papers? Yeah. It is excruciating. And, they, and they, the, the, the point of, con, of, of contact is right at the ends. It's not like a flat clamp. No. It's like a fucking pinch. Mate. Yeah, it's not the right tool for the not job. A, not at all. It's so tough. So, so yeah, so we, you know, so in any case, that was my first experience with it and I were, and, by the time it was over, because I, I ended up buying ear guards, so I was able to keep training. And, you know, so this cauliflower on my right side, which I would say is the more misfigured or yes. disfigured of the two, because it's got a funny shape to it, which I'm totally cool with, by the way. I love it. Um, but that was a result of just how that, of like that first experience with it. Yeah. And it was like that acute one. The one on my left side, that had just slowly come up over the years, never really had that big explosion. Yeah, I'm, I'm similar. My other ear has just thickened over time, except one time I did get punched directly in the ear, like the knuckle landed in my ear and the cauliflower was more internal. Ooh. It wasn't on the periphery. Right. And that's why normal earphones don't work for me on that ear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. which is some if, if you're out there now you've got collies and you're like yeah i can't mess jt with has to strap a boom box to his head on that side <laughs> that's why i gotta go with them them big bow daddies over the <laughs> top um making me more susceptible to attacks on the street so so something to mention there and i think that this is like for if if you're listening and you're kind of new to jujitsu and this is the first time you're hearing about cauliflower ears I think it's probably still the case that it's very hard to find information on how to manage these. It is. Like the people that, you know, what I was being told by the guys at the gym was just part of the story. Like, yeah, you got to drain it, but there's more to it than that. Definitely. And then the doctors didn't know what the fuck was up. So it's, you're a little bit in the dark. So we don't have to go into it now, but we're going to tell you how we think it's best managed today. Yeah, definitely. So if we break down essentially what it is, guys, you're getting a certain amount of damage or trauma to the cartilage of your ear, which is causing a hematoma or a blood clot. Now this can come from the cartilage breaking or just blunt force trauma to the ear, which happens with rugby players, boxers. Is it a blood clot or is it just fluid it, that's it is, coming it, to- It to, is to, a blood clot technically, but over time it becomes more clear. So it's more lymph yeah. than it is like, so this is just my personal experience of draining my ear multiple like times. Bloody water. Yeah, yeah, essentially when it starts, it's just blood. But then the concentration of red blood cells is less and less over time right in the same way if you guys have had a graze and the graze weeps like initially if you just cut yourself it's deep enough it'll bleed but if you just graze you get that kind of weeping which is you know essentially white blood cells uh lymph coming through it's just trying to heal medically known as goo goo yeah, yeah. that gooey crap but essentially 
what happens over time is it starts to solidify and it essentially it adheres to the cartilage you're trying to reinforce it and heal it but then you're getting this kind of disfiguration and this uh, unevenness and roughness and for some people they let their ears puff up they never drain them and it goes solid like that and you've got this boiled egg hanging off the side of your head and that can happen mm. and just repeatedly over time if you don't if you ignore it it will build up and it'll get worse and it does affect your hearing over time it does What's that what what'd you say <laughs> no seriously guys I, I think I've got like a 30% <laughs> Julian <laughs> like that one that's a dad joke for you son it is classic <laughs> you've got kids who can make excuses for you about humour um, but I mean I got 30% hearing loss in my very cauliflower ear at least so I always make sure if my partner is talking to me about something I don't want to hear I just turn <laughs> turn the bad ear towards <laughs> sorry what I just, it is what it is but in terms of actually treating it, here's the thing. Obviously, you know, if you pick a scab, it's going to keep bleeding, keep scabbing, and it just it turns into scar tissue, which is essentially what you're doing to your ear. But if, you, if your ear puffs up and it happens the first time, if you treat it properly, your ears can pretty much go back to normal. It's just if you're stubborn mothers like Joe and myself, you know, you're going to grind those ears and it's going to be residual. Yeah, and no, I, I got no issue with, like, I think it's, I like, I like that we have that in jiu that it's our sure. thing. Yeah. You know, and that you have cauliflower ears, it's like an identifying characteristic. It is, yeah. Um, and I would argue, like, don't let, like, if you're early on in the game, don't feel like draining it is going to stop. Like, you, you're still going to have fucked up ears by the time you get to purple belt. Yeah. Like, you, you know, you're still going to wear that badge of honor. Sure. But if you can just reduce it. Uh, it, you just, I mean, some people will be really badly affected by it. Yep. Like you do see some of you like, man, your ears are fucked. Yes. Like you can't put earphones in it. No. You definitely can't wear the flat brim with the ears tucked in. <laughs> no. That's, like that's not, not a look that you can get down with. No. Um, some people are not affected by it. No. But I, but I do think yeah, if you can manage it better, it just makes life a bit easier for you on the mat. On Tinder. On Tinder. <laughs> You're going to do better because it's funny. I actually The bouncers will still respect you. You will always when get you the enter respect. the line. Always. Yeah. Oh, we've oh. got an MMA fighter uh, here. Yeah. Always. I, and just don't say anything. You just kind of yeah. nod. Yeah. You just say, yeah. I'm yeah. Not. I didn't hear say MMA. Sorry. Right. Yeah. I, man, I, <laughs> I got mistaken for Ross Pearson uh, when I was in Brazil. <laughs> I had these kids asking for my autograph. British guy? Yeah. <laughs> he, I mean, he's a tough guy, you know, yeah. and I really respect to Ross. I think he lives out in Australia now. Okay. Uh, I, I saw him training with uh, Volkanovsky. Oh, wow. Uh, anyway, love Ross Pearson. I was in Brazil and someone was like asking my Brazilian friend, like, is that Ross Pearson? <laughs> my friend was like, yeah. They asked for my <laughs> autograph. I was like, okay. He's like, they think you're Ross Pearson. Just <laughs> sorry, Ross, I forged your signature. I did the same thing. They thought I was Matt Hughes. Oh, I took photos with oh, a bunch there of kids. Is, there's, a, there's a Matt Hughes-ness to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, amazing. That's great. <laughs> That's a story for another day, fam. Yeah, definitely. But let, let's think about it, guys. What Joey was saying about, you know, definitely draining the ear, but the compression element is important. And there is actually a product out there that is designed. Now, excuse me, I did a bit of research. I couldn't find it. There are these plastic molds that you use and you strap to your ear when you sleep. And it will be uncomfortable, guys. Like I, I tried using the bulldog clip with like cotton wool and I could only stand it for like half an hour at a time and it was just so uncomfortable. That's the thing, when you get them, it's so sensitive that really it makes you go, oh. You don't want to. Nah, you don't want to. They fucking hurt. At first they really hurt. It's so sensitive and some of you out there may be more sensitive than others. But that said, if you do rest it, you drain it and you get that compression and you're able to reduce the swelling, the skin of your ear will re-adhere to the cartilage. The problem is, if you don't go through that process, it won't. And for some of you out yeah, there, the you may, new fluid will just come back. It just keep coming back, coming back. And actually a tip that came from my friend is to wear a beanie. Uh, he would wear a beanie to hold like a tight beanie oh, yeah. to hold the ears back. Because for some of you, you may have seen people with really bad cauliflower ears and they're just, they're just out there. They like go elves from ears. normal ears to more like Shrek slash wing nut style. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Having a process for dealing with it there's not a lot of information out there unless you're on like like MMA forums or places where people do get cauliflower ears. I remember when I tried to do the clamping thing, I, I tried so many different things, but one I did was because you're trying to clamp the ear, but the ear is contoured. Yes. So, you know, it's obviously concave on the, on, the, on the outside of the ear. 
So I remember I was like, all right, how do I make a mold for this? And I strapped a couple of $2 coins onto uh, like dollar coins and then like a 50 cent piece. Oh, wow. And then I kind of plugged that into my ear after I drained it. And then and then I taped around the ear and around oh, the head. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, I'll sleep with this. And I think I've ripped it off in the middle of the night because it was so uncomfortable. Yeah. And then the other silly thing is that I just went back to training the next day. That's right. Which this is the, this is the other part of it, isn't it? Yes. You have to drain, then you have to compress, yes. and then you have to rest. Rest it. Yeah. It's, one time. You can't go and bash it up again. No, it's an injury that people will see forever. Like if people could see the scar tissue in your knees, on the outside of your knees, <laughs> you wouldn't be so proud. I'd be horrified. You know, because like, <laughs> you know, back in the day when you had knee surgery, you got this big slice down the middle. People had obscene scars, but now we have keyhole surgery. Mm. So it's like, no, oh, you someone has knee surgery, you don't necessarily know. But the inside of their knees probably look terrible. Their meniscuses are shredded, right? But if that was on the outside and it was on your skin, people would feel a lot more self-conscious about having really bad knees right not just complaining about them so that's the thing when you have this scar and especially if you're a woman i feel like as a guy it's much easier to get away with huh i'm a tough guy look at my cauliflower ears if you're a woman it's it's a it's a hard deal because i mean if you if you you know potentially i'm sure some would love it no no and i'm not saying this i'm not saying it's any kind of sexist way i know how superficial the world is and and all the judgments that get thrown on women which is unfair right that said, if you're doing this thing, which is a combat sport, you're going to cop a bit of wear and tear, facial grazes, all the bits and pieces. You may not be comfortable with it. Some, some might, some might not. And this is true for men too. There's plenty of men out there. They don't, they don't want them ugly ears. But what I'd say is having been to Brazil and trained in Brazil, much more common thing. I saw way more guys with cauliflower ears in Brazil because they have a culture of more combat sports, luta livre, boxing, all of that. I, I didn't feel like I stood out in Brazil other than being a gringo. The cauliflower ear thing, I saw a bunch of guys. Yeah. Not, not in fighting circles, just a dude down the street. Cauliflower ears. Okay. That probably that guy gets in the punch ons. He's a tough guy. Well, you see it here. It's usually the rugby community. Yes. But you can always tell those guys because they're wearing the collared shirt, blue they and white stripes, tucked into the bit. jeans. They got the <laughs> RM Williams, the it's pretty hair. Yeah. You're like, oh, he's not a jiu jitsu guy. <laughs> no, nah, he's a <laughs> private school boy. That's right. <laughs> Or That's why right. people often say to me, I'm sure you get too, they're like, rugby? Rugby. I'm like, I'm too small for, I'm too small for that. <laughs> Jiu-jitsu. I never say I'm too small for anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, or you, I, man, I saw a guy sitting on the tram. It looked like he had coral growing out the side of his head. He looked like he was from Davy <laughs> Jones's locker on, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean. And, it, and he's like a big, big solid guy. And I said, oh, mate, how's it going? Do you train? He's like, what do you mean? I said, do you? Do you do martial arts? Nah, footy. And I was like, okay, cool. Good to know. Not my people. No, no. <laughs> I mean, whatever. Respect. Like As you were, so sir. Continue. Onward. <laughs> now, for you guys, you're out there. You've, you've copped the cauliflower ear. Your ear's swollen up. What are you going to do about it? Now, obviously, Joe and I are rough and ready humans. You know, sure. I don't care. Stick a needle in it. Let's pull the blood out. We've got to be pretty careful around this stuff. <laughs> Because obviously, too, when you start to mess around with needles and breaking the skin, you can get infections. Like, Hold on a second. Let me just fix that camera. So that's the thing, guys. I would say solidly, if you know somebody who's a nurse and then also if you have somebody who's you know medically trained, much better to have them help you than some random guy at the gym, you know, Ivan Drago, who's just i mean he might his have name been, was ivan <laughs> <laughs> yeah but say he's drained a hundred years right the guy's got a lot of experience it doesn't mean you couldn't get no that's right a, a terrible infection but, in your ear which is near your brain which could be you know that could be a problem yeah but the, Shit. the worst thing is going to someone who's had 10 years of medical experience going i've never seen this well you're a freaking idiot you don't hang out with grapplers enough and waiting five hours in emergency at the hospital to try and get your ear drained is also not necessarily what you're going for. yeah it's impractical very impractical I, i'm not against people you know i mean back in the day if you if you're in a war zone and your leg gets cut you're gonna have to stitch your own leg up with black cotton you know you gotta you're gonna have to do something about it otherwise you're gonna get an infection you're gonna die obviously this is not life or death but i think for the best part a lot of what we do in our day-to-day lives we give responsibility for our health and our well-being over to other people and 
it's not the worst thing for you to be able to do it yourself. But if you think of it as an injury and as a wound, you want to be taking all your precautions with antiseptic, keeping things clean. Also, not injecting air bubbles into your bloodstream, which can potentially go to your heart and kill you. Yeah, we're not giving any kind of advice here. All we're doing is talking about what we've done and what, you know, if we were to do it again, this is how we'd approach it. Yeah. Of course, all the utmost care has to be taken and seek the advice of a medical practitioner like before you do anything. Yeah. But yeah, bit of antibacterial, like a disinfectant wipe on the ear. Sure. Get in under the, th- you know, get in, break that first layer of skin with the thing. You'll know when you hit it. You hit it and then start up. to withdraw. And then, yeah, just slow. Yeah. And slow it, and, and steady. And it's really interesting. You're like, how much blood can an ear hold? I'll tell you, like, I think the, yeah, the most I pulled out one time was literally five mils of blood. Well, what's in the, what's in like a diabetes syringe? How much is in there? So technically within that, it's, I, th- I think depending on which one you have, it might be a milliliter. A milliliter. Yeah. I mean, it might, like yeah, so right. one, one mil. One mil. Depending. It could so be, yeah, so you might fill that and then you'll like eject it into the sink or whatever and then yep. you'll go again. Go again, potentially. you go for multiple reps. Potentially. But also sticking the needle in your ear can cause its own scar tissue. So you don't want to have to be doing it multiple, multiple times. Yeah. That is not the ideal thing but what i wanted to talk about relevant to this is you may get some uh misadvice which is for example people like oh you got cauliflower ears just wear ear guards Mm, bit late it's a bit it's a bit late in the i'll be honest i I tried that that's a preventative measure measure Measure. or it's or it's an intermediary once you've taken a couple weeks off jits after draining and all that and then you're like i want to go back Mm. Yeah, wear your guards for a little bit just so you're reducing impact, huh? Yeah. It actually made it worse for me. When, when my cauliflower ear was swollen, I tried to wear ear guards. It made my ear rub more and it caused more inflammation. So I was like, ah, fuck these ear guards. It's bullshit. It's just the wrong time. Right tool, wrong job in, in that instance. Like yeah. wrong, wrong timing. So the other thing is too, like <laughs> rubbing anti-inflammatory creams into your ear is not going to help. Like having more turmeric people do that yeah it doesn't work oh man it's not topical creams aren't helping you and this is the challenge because not all of us know somebody who is a nurse or know someone who's a doctor or even know somebody who is qualified to be able to perform this medical procedure on you even though for what it's worth it is a more or less simple thing the thing that i would really speak against which i've seen is cutting the ear to drain it oh yeah, I saw a guy. Who does that? Uh, grapplers. Like some people are really? doing it. Really? Yeah. It just it, seems like that's it's so unnecessary. disfiguration, yeah, because they, they cut, they literally cut it open, drain it, and then stitch the ear. So you get this crazy. I think one of Craig's ears, like Craig Jones, he actually had this done back at Purple Belt, and he had this crazy like stitch scar across his ear, his oh, uh, wow. left ear. Pretty savage, man. Like it looks rough. If you don't care about the looks and anything like that, maybe – but I would say that that's dramatically worse. Yeah, and you got to look at it like this way too. I, I think I remember somewhere along my journey in that initial period, I spoke to a doctor who was like, look, you know, um, you can drain it. I'm not going to do it for you. But the other option would be to see a plastic surgeon. Mm. And he said, the plastic surgeon will go in there, they'll open up the ear, they'll remove all of the scar tissue, and then they'll stitch it back down and you'll have a normal looking ear. And I, was, and I said, if I'm still playing the sport, should I do that? And he said, well, no, you should do that when you retire from the sport. Correct. You know, which I would think same kind of thing. It's like, all right, if I'm out of the game and, and for some reason you don't want them anymore, which I guarantee by the time you finish the game, you're still going to want them. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that that might be an option to do it that way. But yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, you don't, you don't want to be cutting yourself. Yeah. My mum even said to me, oh, you poor little ears. <laughs> oh, I made these ears and you've wrecked them. She's like... We'll pay for surgery. Is she draining them for you? No, 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 not at all. She wouldn't. No, I mean, right. she she might if I would ask her. My I mom, got my mum to drain mine once. Well, my mum was actually a nurse. Right. So I, I'm sure my mum loves that stuff. My so mum, she, she said the same shit. She, 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 she was just doing it and she got all excited because she like oh, wow. put the, my dad was filming. She put the needle in. She's like, oh, oh, we're under a good spot here. <laughs> she's like extra. And she's like, yeah. And then she like injected it into the sink. Yeah, she's like, this is fun. And then she was like, Oh, there your little ears, Joey. <laughs> and she started to tear up. I was like, oh, yeah. ma. <laughs> yeah, you know, like it, yeah, it's one of those things. Like, you know, she she grew you, you know? Like it's one of those things, I guess, you don't understand. Like imagine your baby boy 
Imagine him get. I mean, you'd be kind of proud, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but also, I don't think Meese would love draining the, fluid from his. Well, just seeing him ears. get cauliflower ears. I'm sure any any responsible parent would be like, or oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know, but that said, my mum offered to pay for surgery on my ears, and I was like, it's fifteen. If you elect to have like an ear reconstruction, which is actually very common in Brazil, it's fifteen grand. Right. And it's a simple procedure. They literally cut the skin, peel it back. Scrape some shit out. Yeah, and then put it back. It's so easy. It's like payday for a plastic surgeon. And you're like, man, to be honest, it's one of those things. I refer to it as my jujitsu tattoo. I don't have any tats. I'm not really into that. I, I like tattoo art, but I don't really want any tattoos. This is body modification <laughs> that I've done to myself. This is a symbol that I'm a stubborn motherfucker who's going to grind my head into any surface possible to beat somebody at grappling. Like, I don't care. I'll snap my own ears off. You know, I won't necessarily cut them off, but, you know, if you're guillotining me and I want to get out and the only way out is to half rip my ear off, I'll do it. Because Sacrifice I'm the ear. that determined. I don't need it, really. Um, and that might be symbolic for how I view the world because <laughs> I don't want to take any inputs. I only want outputs. <laughs> I got two bits of practical advice on that because I think that for a lot of people, they might have experienced cauliflower ear, but perhaps not to the point where it's obviously cauliflowered. Right. And I know that Beck from Jungle Bones here had that where she's like, oh, my ear's really sore, um, but I look at it, it kind of looks normal, but when I touch it, it's sensitive and it was red and it was hot, mm. you know, and, it, and she was putting up for it with it for a little while. What's happening there is generally, from my experience, a precursor to it cauliflowering. Correct. And it's kind of like a warning sign from the jujitsu gods that like, hey, if you keep training hard for another couple of weeks, this thing's going to blow up and then you're going to have, you know, something you've got really got to deal with. So I think at that stage, you can take measures to stop it from going further. And that would be, the first thing is like, yeah, a break from training does actually help, obviously, because it just allows you to stop getting hit in that area and then, it, you know, it will repair and then you come back and you're good. But also, you know, you can ice it. Yes. Like any kind of inflammation injury, if you if you ice it regularly, it is going to help to re, to reduce inflammation. And the other thing you can do at that point is ear guards. Yes. And I think that she did start wearing ear guards, she right? Did. And you know, and you can also be like an extra measure would be okay. Maybe I'll stop using my head for certain positions. So maybe that means you start playing more on the bottom. Different game. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck. You know, develop my guard or whatever it is. But stop using your head as as a you know as a tool, which, you know, you should be using it as a tool in, in jiu-jitsu. Yep. Um, but you do that for whatever, a couple of weeks, and it settles down. That's right. And I think that's really handy for folks. I, I did speak with a, a girl once who was a, uh, a black belt, and she was taught, it was when I had my first cauliflower, and she's like, oh, I've never had issues with them. And I asked her if she did anything. And she said, yeah, often when I finish training, uh, sometimes I'll feel my ears are sore. She said, I will rub my ears, like massage them. Oh, that night i don't know if there's any benefit to it but she's like that al i always felt that it worked for me it just helped to like a massage mm. you know bring more kind of repair to the area right um you know whatever push some to, i guess probably stimulates the lymphatic system pushes a bit of stuff out yep so you know there's a couple of anecdotal pieces there yeah and look what i'd say is this it's it's an injury so we have to treat it as such if you injure your knee because you value walking, you d do what you can to help your knee fix up because we're all like, oh, we don't want to have bad knees. But ears, if you're someone who's not really worried about, you know, extraneous different things, initially it doesn't affect you too badly. Over time, yeah, it can affect your ability to hear and different things. But in truth, it's never that bad that sorry it can feel so sore you don't want to train but then there's a point at which it's not as sore and even if you do nothing to look after it you could keep training and that's why people do end up with ears the way they do but if you think this is an injury i have to take care of it seek advice get attention fingers crossed there are more doc i'm sure that you could google a bjj doctor <laughs> you could find a doctor who's done work with wrestlers done work with jiu-jitsu athletes has seen many a cauliflower ear and actually has experience in being able to drain it treat it you know and you're not just doing diy work but sometimes it can come to that but the idea is to be able to address it as an injury and stop repeating the action that's causing the injury yeah, I think this day and age, it'd probably be a lot easier to find a doctor at your gym 
Yes. Or, you know, in the academy, who, who knows what's up? Yeah. I think back to our, you know, the early days for us and it was like there wasn't a lot of people doing jiu-jitsu. It was all pretty niche. Mm. Finding a doctor that had, had dealt with that sort of thing was kind of unheard of. Very rare. Hopefully now it's much less of an issue. Yeah. And, and look, guys, if you're out there, you've never had a cauliflower ear, you listen to this and you go, what are they all talking Stop about? Stop playing bolos, mate. <laughs> Do some real jiu-jitsu. But it can just happen randomly. Like you could just – you could be playing your game and then maybe you, you go with a partner who's a bit of an injury machine and they knee you in the head. You don't even do anything. You get kneed in the ear and then suddenly your ear's fat and people You could like, be bowling and you knee yourself in the head. <laughs> in which case I'd say bad things happen to bad people. <laughs> karma. <laughs> karma, biatch. No, I but think no, it's it, right. You could just cop an impact. And, and, and that's, that's the way it goes. It. And, and I think ultimately... Like we always say with any of these things, it's really kind of uh, – this is a, a user warning. When you start jiu-jitsu on the waiver, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't say anything about cauliflower ears. <laughs> it doesn't say, ah, oh, fine print, by the way, you might completely wreck your ears and disfigure them and that may hinder your dating prospects in the future. <laughs> so be warned, if you haven't got them, there is every chance you could and if you do – seek treatment because ignoring it it actually it can get pretty wild and if you if you don't know you can look at randy couture bj penn there's some pretty famous i saw a meme ages ago which was like pick these four ears and i could i could pick, <laughs> i could pick three of them so sakurava was one randy couture was another Ooh. one and bj penn yeah and and look man it can it can look the worst well yeah it I doesn't mean, have to though yeah yeah and that's, you know, I think that at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with, like, no, they don't cause any issues. No. It's just a look. And if it's a look that you like, then let it happen. Totally. But if, if you're like, nah, it's not quite something I want to go, like, super deep on right now. Yeah. Like, maybe you're a white belt and you're like, oh, I wouldn't mind a bit of cauliflower, but we're still very early in this journey. <laughs> I have a modeling career yeah, ahead of me. Do a little bit of treatment on them. You know, like, look after them, take it off a couple of weeks drain compress and then you know hopefully it just slows it down for you interestingly and i guess we'll, we'll wrap it up in a sec please uh, but interestingly i'm much less prone to them these days yeah and i do find you kind of get to a point where they just stop being such an issue and i think it's if you look at any other like hardening of the body that occurs like think of calluses on the skin and you think of the unique calluses of jiu-jitsu that you get on the the ends of your fingers and your knuckles it's just a callousing of your ears, essentially, like in a mm, way. It's, over time. it's physiologically different. It's not thickening of the skin, but it's the same idea. Your body's just becoming more durable there. So, you know, badge of honor, whatever. There's some practical advice for you. Definitely. And I think, guys, if anything, if you got them, have no shame in it. It's unique. And if somebody, if you know, you know. You see someone else with cauliflower ears, it doesn't matter what context. You give them the nod. That's like the fight club. It's like, yep, you're a tough dude. I'm a tough dude. Or you're a tough chick. Respect. It's all respect. If I ever see someone else with a cauliflower ear and they see mine, it's just like, you don't need to speak. It's just like, you know. Mm. And so I think there is an intense value in that. It's like, as soon as you know someone does jujitsu, it's like, yeah, there's a common understanding. And it's, it's, I actually think it's positive. Absolutely. We love you and your beautiful cauliflower ears. Yes, exactly. But body proud. Guys, thank you for listening. If you want help with your training, you can check out our program, bulletproofforbjj.com. If you want more help or any advice, we've got a bunch of free stuff on YouTube. You can also go there. And if you do want to support the show, we now are on Patreon. We've got a few different tiers there of support. You can simply buy us a coffee once a month, or you could even scale it up a little bit and buy us a bowl of acai Ooh, to share. Nice. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys.